It is so nice to celebrate literature outside. Uh, Nuestra Palabra, Latino writers having to say, we've been doing this 14 years in Houston, Texas, so we're happy to, to share this with you. So I want to bring out another writer. I want you to appreciate, too, what we have going on here. While other states ban literature, we have the banned authors among us. Yeah. Contraband people. I believe we crossed state lines with some contraband, so... Ay, 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 a ver que va a pasar. And I am, I, I'm not sure if I'm excited or scared to hear the words that were banned in Arizona. Then we buena amiga, Carmen Tafoya and her book, Curandera, por favor. Oyes, un abrazo a todos aquí because you are doing the work of democracy. You are doing the work that this country was supposedly built on, the idea that people educate themselves, that they know what their history is, and they know what their current problems are, and they study what their lawmakers are doing, and if their lawmakers are doing something that is not for the benefit of the people, they take those lawmakers out and put somebody else in. You are educating yourself about current issues today. You know, when they first banned this book, I pulled it off my shelf again. I mean, it was published 30 years ago. I didn't know, maybe I put something really bad in there, you know? I went back, I read it again. Híjole, que me hicieron? And I read the whole thing. You know what it talked about? It talked about peace. It talked about ending wars. It talked about being proud of who we are as human beings, yeah. all of us, of our culture. It talked about the fact that San Antonio's history didn't start with that building there. Yeah. That San Antonio's history started maybe about 3,000 years before then, maybe more, only 3,000 that we really know about because you know, they're just now digging it up. They went looking recently. Did you see a little tiny article in the San Antonio paper about a week or two ago? They went looking for the original site of Mission San Jose. And guess what? They found a native dwelling. It wasn't just a home. It was like a community center where everybody gathered. And they estimated to have been built sometime 1500 to 3000 BC. That's our history. Is that in our history books? No. So maybe that's what was dangerous about this book. But when I finished reading the book again, 30 years after it had been published here in San Antonio by Angela de Hoyos, I said, you know what? They never read this book. I was feeling all complimented that they had banned my work, that there was something X-rated in there. And I said, they never read it. They saw it on the list of Mexican-American studies curriculum right along with Shakespeare's The Tempest yes, and Paulo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, yeah. world literature. And when they saw it, they said, box that up, put it in the book graveyard, take it away, we don't need to read those things. They were being used by the Mexican-American studies curriculum. And do you know how bad the Mexican-American studies curriculum is in Tucson? It is K through 12 exemplary. They were getting a 95% graduation rate from young people who are proud of their heritage and proud of themselves. Can you name a city, San Antonio included, that has a 95% graduation rate? Tony's right. It's not about us tearing down the government. It's about us becoming the people of the United States. They don't want us. They don't want us. They want to pretend that the Latinos, that the Mexicanos and the indigenous people don't belong here. They want to pretend that, that the United States history begins when the Europeans arrive. That is racist. They have accused our material of being racist, yeah. but the material that is in the textbooks right now is racist. That's right. There's a few lies that, that they're telling you. I want to make sure that you get these lies straight because once you undress a lie, it looks skinny, it looks ugly, and it looks like a lie. One of the lies they're telling you is that the state of Arizona has banned ethnic studies in the schools. 
The state of Arizona has not banned ethnic studies. It has only banned ethnic studies that deals with peoples they don't want to be part of their history. It is okay to talk about the Puritans who are an ethnic group. It is okay to talk about the early Anglo-American settlers who are an ethnic group. It is okay to discuss the values of the dominant culture. It is okay to study ethnic studies in Arizona as long as the ethnic studies are not our ethnicity. They're not about Chicanos. They're not about Latinos. They're not about indigenous peoples because Arizona is full of Chicanos, Latinos, and indigenous peoples and therefore we become a very scary looking prospect. They think maybe they could wipe us all away and Arizona would look a lot, what? Whiter? Yeah. Nicer? Smarter? No. But it is a lie. Another lie they're saying right now is that they didn't ban the books. We didn't ban the books. We just, we just, uh, they're not in the classroom anymore. Okay? <laughs> they're not in the classroom. They're, they're someplace else. You can go to the library and check them out. Do you know how many copies their library has One. of this book? One book, some libraries, some high schools. Do you know how many copies they have of these books? Sometimes none. I know the educators of Arizona. I worked with them in the 1980s. Right after this book was published, we moved to California and then to Arizona. And while I was in Arizona, I was talking to the teachers. And I know what exceptional people they were. I know how hard they worked to get Mexican-American studies into their curriculum. I know what kind of professionals they are by the successes they've had with educated, contributing young high school graduates. May we all be so fortunate as to have that kind of an education that makes us proud of our heritage, where we come from, who we are. Thank you all. Yeah.